Melinda has a question here. I know the course will get to this later, but there is so much talk in permaculture about slope and swales. What do you do if you have a flat lot with an abundance of water? Well, nothing's perfectly flat. Unless you're in Holland, of course, where you might have constructed flat, but even then you can do things. You can be more creative, you can move the swale around, but you can also make canals and all kinds of interesting things. I've got the cows in here. I'm actually grazing the bottom of the swale. They only came in yesterday afternoon. And I've got water sitting here and the cows are already manuring in here. The water's going through the mound, not down. It's going at right angle to contour. And that manure is diluting into this water. At the moment, I've got a swivel pipe open here. So the water's going down through the swivel pipe. So now that water draining out that way means it doesn't go all the way along the swell because we've got it exited in there. Just this last little wet bit and we've got all this beautiful hangover forage here. The cattle have been down here eating the ice cream bean. They've been here getting all the mulberry. They were, only came in here last night, oh, yesterday evening. They've eaten the mulberry off, they're loving it. They're dropping manure in the base of the swell and when next time we get a big rain, their manure will dilute all the way along. I'll block the swivel pipe. We'll get a diluted manure going in through the swale. The water's actually going in through the swale, through the mound. It's not necessarily going down, it's going along, under, right angle to contour going through. Now, if we were on flat country, nothing's perfectly flat. You can have a hundred to one, you can even have a thousand to one. If you've got a one meter high mound or you've got one meter of water here, 100 to one, you've got 100 meters of water. If you've got a thousand to one, you've got a thousand meters of water. So your, your water will sit all the way back when it's flat. You'll hold more water, but it'll still soak through here. Now you may have surplus water. You have too much water. Okay. The great thing about flat land is, or flat-ish land, like I say, it's never perfectly flat unless you're on a salt pan. There's some slope. Your, your land is usable. You, you've got really convenient land. So if you don't want that much water sitting back there for a few hours or a day while it soaks in, because that's all it will sit there for, it won't be there all the time, it will soak in. You can put deeper swales, which means they're probably going to turn into little canals. Now, you've got a Chinampa-esque type system, the most productive, sustainable design system ever documented in the history of the world, the Chinampas mostly canals and water. So what you dig out, you go a bit deeper, you end up in a water table, you've got a kind of permanent canal pond aquaculture. That's the most productive aquaculture. The canals, lots more edge in these strip canals. And the extra material makes a higher mound. So you've got a well-drained mound because what you gain here in depth of water, you gain there in the height of the mound. So you've got a better drained mound. You've concentrated the, the, the soil. You've got higher, well-drained mound, and you've got a deeper, more usable aquaculture canal pond. So you're going in a great direction. You know, that, that's, that's the wonderful thing about flat country. Disadvantage is you don't have head pressure. You don't have height on the water. But the, the great advantage is you've got usable land and You've got easily aquaculture for little earthworks. Often you've got wind, so you can direct the wind to lift the water and give you a little bit of head pressure. It's all roundabouts and swings, water and land. It's all a matter of design. There's no disadvantage whatsoever. In fact, it's a great advantage to be in flat country. You can, you know, the problem is the solution every time.